Hello colleagues, today we will be discussing a case of a 45 years old male who presented with complaints of shortness of breath for the past few weeks. Now this was the ECG that was performed when he was seen. Let's see what positive findings can we see on this ECG. Okay, now we can see that there are ST elevations which are very obvious and these are present in the chest leads and I have marked them for you as well. Now look at these ST elevations. These are pretty obvious ST elevations, there is no doubt about that and the shape of these ST elevations might be suggestive of some cardiac pathology, especially infarction that might be going on. Now we have to see that is this myocardial infarction or something else that are producing these ST elevations. Before that, let's see some other features as well that are present on this ECG. Here we can see that along with these elevations, there are T wave inversions marked by the arrows. These T wave inversions are present in the interior as well as the lateral chest leads, especially AVL. So do they have any significance related to these ST elevations? We'll see about it in further slides. Okay, now have a look on the Q waves as well. These are pathological Q waves which are present very clearly in the lead AVL. However, we cannot see any other leads that might be showing these Q waves. So we have to be careful when evaluating such types of Q waves. We need to see these are pathological or non-pathological, especially related to cardiac ischemic events. Well, let's see further and see whether this ECG is pointing towards something or not. In addition to these findings, we can also see some findings which are very important and should not be missed. And these are the poor R wave progression. So what actually poor R wave progression means is that in the normal healthy individuals, we can see that the R wave progresses from V1 to V6 and in a very good and healthy way. But over here, we cannot see a presence of R wave and a healthy R wave up till this V3 and even further as well. So this means that there is some effect to the myocardium as well. And there are many pathologies that can cause this. So this poor r wave progression is a very important parameter, especially when taken into consideration the ischemic events. Okay, now since we have gone through the ECG and we have picked up some important findings, so let's discuss the differential diagnosis for these. Well, the ST segment elevation is one of the important findings in this case and we have to see the differentials for this which includes the acute myocardial infarction, coronary artery spasm, pericarditis, early repolarization, left ventricular hypertrophy and LV aneurysm. Now let's discuss the ECG further considering into mind these differentials and let's see which of the diagnosis can be definitely made based on the other ECG parameters which we are discussing further. So I have given the ECG now on the right hand side and let's discuss the differentials. First of all, I like to start with the coronary artery spasm. Based on the history and the findings on the ECG which include the Q waves, the T wave inversions and the ST elevation that are kind of persistent. So this coronary artery spasm is not the likely diagnosis for this. Pericarditis, again a very important differential. Well, this is again unlikely. The reason is that although there are ST segment elevation, but there is no PR depression, there is no PR elevation and ST depression in AVR and this is not a generalized kind of ST elevation. Along with that, the history is also not supportive of pericarditis. So this is kind of ruled out. Early repolarization is a benign pathology and based on the history, the presence of Q waves and the T wave inversions, this again appears very, very unlikely. 
left ventricular hypertrophy depends because the patient is not hypertensive i have not given you in the history and he is having some symptoms which precludes towards some pathology again the presence of q waves the t wave inversions is not suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy now two differentials are left that is acute myocardial infarction and the lv aneurysm now let's discuss there are some rules which helps in the diagnosis of one of these okay the rule number 1 is the sum of the t wave amplitudes in the leads v1 to v4 compared to the qrs amplitude in the same leads should be more than 0.22 to make it a diagnosis of st segment elevation myocardial infarction the accuracy for this formula reaches around 87% so now this is the ecg and we have to apply the rule over here for that we will have to take some of the t waves from these leads and also the sum of the qrs from the same leads again so i have done this and now i have taken a value which is 0.21 well this value is less than 0.22 so this suggests that this is not in the favor of acute st segment elevation mi and this is more supportive of aneurysm because we have seen that the rule suggests that any value more than 0.22 will favor mi and less will favor aneurysm so this rule is favoring aneurysm now let's discuss rule number 2 so this is kind of a same rule with some modification in the previous rule we have to take the amplitude of all the t waves and the qrs complexes in this case we just have to see that in any of the leads from v1 to v4 if the t wave amplitude to the qrs amplitude ratio is equal to or more than 0.36 then this is in the favor of mi the accuracy of this rule is a bit higher and reaches around 90% now this is ecg again and i have applied the rule and i have taken a value of all the leads and i have discussed this further so these are the values now for each of the leads and we can see that lead v1 is showing 0.13 similarly 0.19 in lead v2 0.28 and 0.23 and all of these values are less than 0.36 now this rule again after applying it is suggestive of aneurysm as compared to myocardial infarction okay now since we have applied the two rules and both of these are not in the favor of myocardial infarction and are more supportive of myocardial aneurysm formation in addition to the previously discussed findings there were some more features that were supportive of lv aneurysm and these include the absence of the chest pain there was again no dynamicity in the ecgs no reciprocal changes t waves were not hyperacute that are more suggestive of ischemia or infarction and the cardiac biomarkers were not raised okay now since the ecg and the rules which we applied were more supportive of lv aneurysm for that we performed an echocardiogram on the patient and this is the echo clip being shown so this is a lv which is being shown over here and the arrow is pointing towards that portion of the lv which is not contracting well as we can see over here and it is kind of more bulging out and this favors the aneurysm formation so this is the area of the aneurysm which is marked by this circle so this ecg and the rules which we applied clearly showed that they were right and the echo was diagnostic of lv aneurysm in this patient Let's discuss some few pearls regarding the LV aneurysm. It is one of the important mechanical complications after acute myocardial infarction in 5-10% of the cases formed after a full thickness infarct that gets thin and replaced by the fibrous tissue. The inert portion cannot take part in the contraction and herniates outward towards cisly. Most of the LV aneurysms are asymptomatic and are found in follow-up cases on echocardiogram. 
it has been associated with some complications of its own including the heart failure the arrhythmias and the thromboembolism the treatment will include the medical management and the surgical inspection in some of the cases